big subject here, one which generates much discussion and debate, our judicial branch and our court system. The courts, the, the courts deal with criminal justice system and then they deal with the civil justice system. And the first, that's the first issue right there, it's jurisdictional. It's like, what does this particular court handle? So you've got something where O.J. Simpson shoots somebody and then he gets off of that, but the family's able to, to sue him for a civil damage. So we have a different trial. And who's paying for these trials and, and what is it putting the, the victims through? And how much money are we spending on it? And how much money are the attorneys making off it as opposed to the people who mm. actually sued somebody? <laughs> so you look at those and you say to yourself, okay, jurisdictional, then you dive in to jurisdiction. And you say to yourself, hmm, there is criminal and civil. Those are two. Then there's financial, tort, equity, admiralty, trademark, patent, copyright, trade, tax, social security, immigration, armed forces, treason, impeachment, which I give to our courts. Why should impeachment be handled through politically involved people who have skin in the, in the game trying to impeach somebody? Right. Writs, injunctions, life, liberty, property, animal rights, international or other law, or plain matters of fairness <laughs> shall be considered together by every court. And then I go through these three court situations. I set up the justices as 25 years old, certain qualifications, um, not, not a big deal. As, and, and then I go into, and, and I give these courts jurisdiction over all of it. And they can bring in whoever they want, as they wish, to get information. If, the, if it's an admiralty case, it's going to be heard by judges who are better versed in admiralty. If it's a civil case in a particular area, it's going to be heard by judges who are particularly well versed in civil matters and in that area. But it can also bring in the criminal and the civil together so that one court case is heard together as opposed to all these different court cases, all these different jurisdictions, all these different types of courts, and all these, it's like, we just want fairness. We want justice. It's the justice system. Let's just have it all handled by, and I have three judges. I'm not into the, uh, they call it the law in pleadings practice, which we have now. And I've been there. I was in the Beverly Hills court and represented myself. They call it uh, impropria personae in civil court against some pretty heavy attorneys, including jo the Johnny Carson lady who ran that show. And um, these were pretty, pretty major, you know, it was, it was the Superior Court of Beverly Hills and the presiding judge who hated me and I always ended up getting him. And uh, I was in there, I, I think I did five or six or seven cases there. I hardly, I lost one maybe, but I was like, and, and I'd had these guys dancing, but uh, it was a joke, you know. The, the briefs, it's, it's briefs is the name of the game these days. And so people are giving, it's who's got the better attorney or who's the smarter person. Because I happen to be smarter than these attorneys because I knew I, I never did a court case. I didn't win going in. I already knew what the, what the law was and these guys didn't because they don't really practice law. Lawyers, when I was in court, they had to practice law because I knew what the law was and actually read it. But there's this sort of boys club in the attorney world where, oh, well, I'll give you the plea bargain and this and that, and they never really get down to practicing law. They never get down to, to really getting into the nuts and bolts of it, unless they write a brief, and most of them are too lazy to do it. So I give this, so I give the, think of a citizen in positions that I was in and in positions that many people are in where they've just got uh, an issue. They want to take to court because they want to know what the legal position is. What are their choices? Well, if it's a two, three thousand dollar matter, and they're like, well, so it's going to cost me two, three thousand to hire an attorney, and I'm not going to get anything, so I'm just going to let it ride. And then people know that. You know, a lady making making uh, hats for people out in uh, in Texas, who's just collecting people's money, and she's not making any any boots. I'm sorry, not hats, boots. And she's just like, nope. 
she knows they're not going to sue her because they're all relatively affluent people who can afford a thousand, two, three thousand dollars for a pair of boots. They're just not going to sue her. So this lady just gets away. Continues down that road, the rip off, rip off, rip off. The guy who's who get, you know paid five hundred dollars to do your plumbing and then he didn't do it right and that that whole kind of deal. These people just and a small claims court is not an attractive venue. It's still, it's this venue. You have to. It's people go into court, and I don't know if you've ever been in a court, but it is the there are no windows. The guy's in a black robe. It's scary. I don't care who you are. And it's convoluted. Nobody really knows what's going on. It's, it's, it's just not inviting. And it you should need be. interpreters. You need a lawyer to read a letter from a lawyer. Right. Uh, right. Well, there you go. So you've been in some of it. <laughs> so our courts. So I have the first court you go to is a review court. Free of charge, you go there. You don't have to, the other, the other party can come or not come. It doesn't make any difference. You can go to this court. You can tell them, have to tell them about it, obviously. You go in there, you get three judges whose expertise best matches the issues of the case and who may further call upon evidence, expertise, briefs, or sworn testimony of any other person who shall have the right to be represented by counsel. So everybody can be represented by counsel, but the review court is uh, gives a, issues a non-binding decision, and the opinion in the in the review court is just an opinion. It's not binding, so there's no. It, it it takes the pressure off of going to court. You get three different judges; they're experts in the field, and they give you an opinion, and they tell you, look, like the guy did in the Tom Brady case, the judge said, and I, it's happened to me. The judge sends you, he, the, the smart judges, they say, why don't you two go out in the hall? I'll get you in, a, I'll give you about 20 minutes. Well, I'll bring this right back up. You're not going to lose any time. Just go out back in the hall and see if you can come to some agreement here. Right. That's a smart judge. Right. Telling you, look, this is what's going on. So this non-binding opinion is, you know, you got three different judges here. Mm -hmm. and they're giving you the skinny, and one guy might be a little left, one might be a right, one might be in the middle, but basically you're getting three different opinions. It's like getting basically three free attorneys who are versed right in this subject, and they're giving you their opinion, and it's going to say, look, this is pretty much what the deal is. You might not want to go and get a binding opinion when you can make a deal yourselves and not have to, uh, not have, to have a binding decision. If you do, if, the, if they can't come to terms, if people can't come together and settle something. If they can't see the writing on the wall, so to speak. <laughs> yeah, <it's> spoken <laughs> like a judge. Then our judgment court shall randomly select judgment court. Review court, judgment court. This one, same thing. Three justices whose expertise best matches the issues of the case. They can consider anything they want. All this, is this testimony, uh, is this testimony admissible? Is this testimony not admissible? We're going to rely on our judges to determine what's admissible and what's not admissible. There are three of them. They can battle it out themselves, or you can get three different opinions from But they're going to come up. These three judges are going to come up with it like the Supreme Court. It's like, OK, well, if one's left. In, in this case, you're not going to get three separate opinions. You're going to get one opinion that they've agreed on, like our Supreme Court. You might get a dissenting opinion where the, right. the judge says, look, you should take this to the appeals court, because that's the third court. But they can, they can do any jurisdiction, and they, can do, and they can rely on any information they want, and any person they bring in can have an attorney represent them, and the state might obviously uh, give the, anybody an attorney to represent them if they cannot afford one. And these judges give you a binding judgment on the merits of the case. And then that's pretty much it. If you want to appeal it, then you can appeal it. Exact same situation, three different judges. Three ju three di these are three judges in the review court, three different judges in the judgment court, and three different judges in the appeals. Because you've got nine different judges' opinions. And I'll tell you what, most of them are going to be pretty close. The law is the law, and that's the situation. And you're going to have to like understand what it is. I don't see a lot of course cases going to the appeal stage. So we reduce the dependency of course. Plus, these cases can be heard very quickly before people have time to create their stories. Let's get our story straight. The review court must issue a non-binding opinion within one week of submission. One week of submission. They need a binding opinion. So this stuff's fresh. The non-binding opinion. 
The judgment court, which is a binding, first binding opinion, is one month of submission. So these people are there. They're ready to go. You submit your case. Something comes up. You're like, boom, I'm going to boom. And you punch it, and you go there, and you can do a lot of it online and on Skype and the whole bit. And then three months for the uh, appeals court, and then uh, three months for the Supreme Court. So we're not waiting forever. So a non-binding opinion um, could lead to the next step. In other words, they're, they're basically suggesting that these two parties look at it for what it is, and hopefully they'll be able to come to a resolution without having to go further downstream. That would be the hope. And you know, if you go to review court, that's, that's easy schmeasy. Nobody has any skin in the game. It's not that heavy. You just sort of like, well, the review court said this, and you know, they don't get to overturn much. Right. <laughs> And right. it was quick, and it was fast, and it was painless, and it didn't cost anybody any money. So we're hoping to clear up, you know, 90% of the stuff is, oh, I, you think, and then people watch like the Judge Judy and all that stuff. People right. go in, and they, they really have this confidence that they're right. And then they go, oh, my gosh, I didn't know that. And then now they know. Been, I may have been way off base here. <laughs> right. And now that they know, then they can say, okay, well, let's make a deal. Or maybe they've been led down a road by their attorney or led astray because the attorneys there's almost a built-in it seems like there's always this built-in uh, uh, tendency for them to want to create problems that may or may not be there because it's a billing situation in this situation there aren't going to be any I mean you can hire an attorney if you want he can go in there and do you know and represent you absolutely right uh, you know my feeling is the people who go to law school are going to be on these courts because there's going to be a lot of action in review court. If you really want to practice law, then you're going to be sitting in one of these review courts. You're going to be handling cases, and you can handle it wherever you want. Right. You're just reviewing cases. It's not like you even need an office. So it's a good job for somebody to have. And it's, it's, it's practicing the law. The law is then getting practiced. And people are not afraid of it. So the more citizens go through the review court, the more they get to know the law, and then the more we have more citizens get to know the law, the better democracy we have. The proceedings of the judiciary, which, which um, I did a proceedings page on all of the, on all of the um, branches of government. And this one is, um, upon the occurrence of a conflict, incident, accident, crime, or suspected occurrence of a crime, an officer of the law shall immediately present on camera, online, any suspected perpetrator, victims, citizens, witnesses, potential evidence, stipulations, and observations to the review court. So when, there's a, when, when something goes down, the evidence is already being forwarded to a review court. Without any citizen saying, I want to go to review court, that's where it, officers of the law are just enforcing the law. They're not interpreting the law. They're not just collecting evidence. Right. They're, more, they're just objective, more objective and less judgment. Just, right. and, Cameras, body cameras, cameras on cars for, for officers, absolutely. If they're putting the cameras on us, we're going to put the cameras on them. And then the review court, whose justices shall equally educate all those involved as to their legal positions and merits and vagaries of the pertinent law, shall consult with any justices they may deem helpful, question all parties, may accept stipulations, because if you and I are in a thing, I say, oh, we agree that on that, and we agree on this, and we agree on that. Like, yeah, I hit him, and yeah, he did that, and yeah, he did that. And this is where we disagree. It clears up a lot of problems. Stipulations are, are wonderful because they're, we, it's what we agree on, and we can get to the to crux of the matter. Right. Require further findings of fact. Entertain remedies proffered by any parties involved. Entertain remedies. Somebody can come up and say, well, well, I, I, I'll give them this right in the middle of a court. I'll give you, the guy will say, well, okay, I'll take that, I'll take this. And then they have a settlement right there in the middle of the courtroom, right in front of the judge. Or as the review's going on and the emails go back and forth, the judges realize, okay, here's a remedy, because that's what judges are supposed to do, get to the remedy in so a civil there, situation. So there would be a greater incentive to resolve the issue on all sides, right? From the judge's perspective, from the people's perspective, and that could be entered in anywhere along the, uh, that event, you know, the legal event. Someone could say, you know what, why don't we just take this road? And it can do it openly, evenly, with everybody there. Nobody has to accept. Obviously, the other party has to accept or reject it. So there's no real pressure on it. It's just the idea for a judge is, the idea for me is solve the problem. Right. Get court out case. of my courtroom. <laughs> right. <laughs> Three attempts must be made to make a party aware of any infraction prior to any warrant being issued for their arrest. 
unless contracting them put unless contacting them puts people in immediate danger obviously any office of the law making more than three arrests not leading to convictions any officer of the law making three arrests not leading to convictions shall receive disciplinary action what disciplinary action I leave it to others but this is law enforcement saying, okay, I'm not just going to, in South Beach, they just arrest people. Right? I saw a black man being arrested because he was black. I mean, I, 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 was, I was stunned. There was another white guy that witnessed this who went and wrote an affidavit up after the guy got carted off by this cop. His, the guy, the white guy with him did not get arrested. It was, it was because he was black. It was absolutely so clear to us. We looked at each other. I didn't even know this guy. I was going out for a swim. He was coming back from a restaurant. We sat down and spent two hours on an affidavit, presented it to the black guy and says, oh, well, I can't do that because that's going to have these cops. I have to live here. These cops will be all over me if I do that affidavit. That's exactly what we want to stop. People are being afraid of the law. And that's what this particular court situation does. This constitutional provision takes care of it all. <laughs>